Namaste everyone. I wish to uh, talk in this video regarding Vastu and a few important tidbits about Vastu. And before we proceed, I should remind you that from October of this year, 2024, sorry, 2022, I'm going to do a course on Vastu, which will include basics and intermediate of Vastu. And we'll cover Vastu in depth, along with covering Astro Vastu also in depth. And as you know that I have had done many revolutionary researches, there will be many researches in the course as well. So if you are considering learning Vastu, the course is best that is being offered right now by anyone and is highly recommended. Now coming to my topic, Vastu is also mentioned in Vedas. And out of, you know, I, I always say that, that the remedial measures that we employ now, very few of them are originally recommended or you say astrologically recommended. Generally, the remedies that we do are religiously recommended. They are religious. However, though with experience, we have found that you know, religious remedies also have a positive impact and it is the gods that save us and also control our fortune. But don't you think that the astrologically recommended remedies will be good or more powerful or you say better or is better result giving? So these are the astrological remedies which are highly recommended at the first place when you actually want to remedy things. When you want a spiritual progress, when you want to rectify the thought and emotion of people, then spiritual remedies are good. But coming to the manifestation of real things, the happening of real things, astrologically recommend, astrology recommended remedies are to be done. And Vastu is one such area, which is an astrologically recommended remedy. Vastu is recommended as an astrological remedy at many places and Vastu is a very old science also mentioned in Vedas. Now there are a few things regarding Vastu that I will actually want to talk about. Like Vedic astrology, if you see Vedic astrology today, the thought process is distorted, the parampara is gone and the Vedic astrology today is much broken, disturbed. And so is with Vastu also. I think that in Vastu, there is now inclusion of Feng Shui and many things which originally does not belong to Vastu, which have made Vastu inefficient. For this particular reason, the Vastu that is being done today, that is being practiced today is not as good as it was, and is, as it was before. And this is my prime purpose in the course also. So teach you the original Vastu, the real Vastu, the Vastu which, the original Vastu which gave Vastu the glory that it enjoys. And we are going to talk about a few things related to that only. There is one thing that needs to be understood. You know, when you go to a place of historical interest, such as Khajuraho in Madhya Pradesh or Khajuraho in Madhya Pradesh and uh, Sanchi Stupa near Bhopal in the streets in the city of Sanchi. You will find that there are mention of multi-story buildings. There are images depicting multi-story buildings. However, in the Vastu text of that era, in the Vastu text before that era, and in the Vastu text even after that era, Considering that Buddha was somewhere in 500 or 300 BC, before Christ, we find Vastu only for the ground floor and not for the ab ab above floors, you know, not for the other floors. It does not come from the fact that there was no multi-story buildings, but comes from the fact that the major Vastu is done for the ground floor only. 
However, we cannot say that there is no vastu for other flows. There is. But the vastu of the ground floor is primary. But before we go to that, we should understand what signifies vastu. The Chitra Nakshatra, whose lord is Tvashta, who had what Vishukarma does in Purana, the same thing Tvashta does in Vedas. So Chitra, who is loaded by Tvashta in Vedas and Vishukarma by the Puranic thought, indicates Vastu. And if one have good planets in Chitra, one can do good in Vastu. And when Chitra is afflicted, then in that particular scenario, one can have Vastu defects. Not only that, the Rashis where the Chitra falls, Virgo and Libra are also very important in Vastu. Those having prominent planets in Virgo and Libra, those having the Lord of Libra and Virgo, Mercury and Venus positive in their horoscopes, can also do Vastu, can learn Vastu, should do Vastu. And those who have Libra and Virgo afflicted, their Vastus are also afflicted. Not only this, Mars being the Karka of land when it is powerful also indicates that one can be quite successful in Vastu and one should do Vastu. Specifically, for the remedy of these planets, Venus, Mercury and Mars, learning Vastu is essential. And also when Mars is afflicted in the horoscope, it leads to Vastu defects in all the properties on everything which is related to the Vastu that is owned by the native. So this is something that has to be kept into mind before we proceed further. Now, keeping in mind the keeping in mind the revelation that I want to create with the course, let me talk about a few things. I think you know, like over the time, people tend to get some preconceived rules, some tips and tricks, some thumb rules. It seems you know, thumb rules are made for people of lower intellect those who are not scholars in a college those who cannot do phd also have some eligibility to at least complete their education somehow for them these tips and tricks are made so even those who are not that intelligent who are not that good can at least make a living but the sad part with kali yuga is such people have taken on the forefront. And it is only this particular thing of, you know, ineligible people or people who never go with tips and tricks that are ruling the science. The problem will be solved when we come out of tips and tricks and do the real thing. In astrology also this have happened, you know, result of planet in this house, result of planet in this Rashi, result of this combination. This is very good. If you, if you are looking for, you know, the results of planets as per your horoscope, the result of combination as per your horoscope, is, it may give you much delight, something to talk about, something to pass your time. But this is not the formal and traditional study of astrology. Do you think studying this way you should get a PhD into astrology? I don't think so. And an astrologer, a practicing one who is good in his craft, knows that, knows the importance of these things, right? The same goes with Vastu also. Nowadays in Vastu, there are some standard and fixed rules, which is not reality, which should not be a reality. Have you seen the ancient forts made according to the Vastu of their times? Do they think, do you think that they follow a certain rule? I don't think so. So let me talk of a few things. Let me talk of a little bit of Vastu, a few tips here and there that I think will help you. Will help you understand the science and make your life better. There are a few tips that I'm going to share with you. And the first one of them is the door. So first of all, I, the main entrance of the building, the main entrance of the palace is the door. You can place the door in almost any direction. One direction is divided into many sub-directions, eight at least, 16 at max. Right, so a door in any direction can be auspicious depending on the horoscope and depending on the portion where it is falling. But while choosing the door, you should keep one particular thing in mind. 
that Taurus, Gemini and Cancer, these three Rashis indicate East direction. And if you have Sun in these three Rashis, the door of your home should not be facing East. Leo, Virgo and Libra indicate South direction. And if you have Sun in these Rashis, the door of your home should not face South. Capricorn, Sagittarius and Scorpio indicate West direction. And you have Sun in these Rashis, the door of your home should not be facing this direction. And Aries, Pisces and Aquarius indicate the north direction. And if you have sun in these Rashis, your main door should not be facing north. What happens if it does? There is problem related to the significations of the sun in your horoscope. Depending on the Rashi where sun is situated in, depending on the house where sun is, which sun is aspecting, depending on the house lordship of sun. And everything that sun indicates in a horoscope, take go for a toss. And if you don't know the horoscope, then at least you know the normal signification, the natural significations of the sun. So the father, authority, prestige, health, status takes a hit. People have problem with elders, problem with government employees. There are ego clashes, there are fights, and these things happen, right? I am just telling you the result based on the natural significations of sun, right? So this is the first thing that I will want to highlight. The second thing, that I will want to highlight is the center of the home. The center of the property, which is Brahmasthan, should not be covered. You know, if you have seen ancient buildings, I have been into Kerala for long and uh, I have seen the traditional Kerala buildings have the center open. The center of the home should be open. Also in villages, like as I belong to Bihar, the center of the home, you will see it is completely empty. Even if the home is having three floors together, in all the floors at the center, it will be empty. There will be some, you know, there will be some, there will be some iron structure in between on the floor. Jali kind of a thing. I don't know what it is called. A net kind of a stuff in between the center of the home on all the three floors. So that if anyone accidentally goes there, they don't fall. But the center is kept empty. So you make sure that the Brahmistan of the home, the center of the home, whether it be it your flat or your home, should be empty and clutter free. Most probably no walls also. If there is a wall, that is not an issue, but that area should not be cluttered. As if the Brahmistan is cluttered, this is the area from where the blessings come. This is the area from where the intelligence comes. And if it is cluttered, if, if there is a lot of objects in the center of the home, if it is dirty, not well taken care of, then it becomes a problem. The decision taking ability of the person is disturbed and blessings and new opportunities hardly come. In those particular scenarios, when you have walls at the center, walls in the Brahmasthan, or somehow there are some obstructions in Brahmasthan which makes it very cloggy which leads to the issue that I have just told you, a best remedy will be to light something in the Brahmistan so that it appears to be more airy and open. And whenever I say light, tube light and bulbs are the second best opinion option. The first best option is to have some stool there, put a little bit of unbroken rice, what is called akshat and lighting and lamp, ardhan pot lamp, dia over it. This is the best remedy. Secondarily, the crux of Vastu, the reality of Vastu, is the uses of object that is used to make the building. This is used to make the home. This is the basic crux of Vastu making changes in the uh, in rooms changing the color changing the color of the bulb changing the paint of the wall is not the actual one so i don't think that you have seen any painted food right the object the material from which the structure is made is the thing that has value the maximum value this is the particular reason some forts are made up of rock. Some forts are made up of wood and different different materials are used. Nowadays, we have a limited opinion. Bricks, tiles, 
but still we have few many of them some people have a tile flooring some people have a stone flooring which flooring should you use benefic planets tile flooring malefic planet stone flooring sorry stone flooring is what i will recommend now i will share a research with you and many of these researches i am going to share in the course and also these researches were exclusive for, for the course also to be very very honest with you but still but still i should give a few hint out being generous i think so you say that any planet there are 30 degrees in a rashi so i divide it into 3 0 degree to 10 degree floor 10 degree to 20 degree walls 20 degree to 30 degree roof check the horoscope and check the planet between 0 degree to 10 degree check all the planets between 0 degree to 10 degree take the most take the best planet the most auspicious planet out if there is only one planet, choose that planet, despite it is auspicious or not. If there are more than one planet, choose the best one. And if there is no planet, in that scenario, look from the first house to fourth house. The planet from the first house to fourth house, whichever planet is there, you have to choose the best out of them. If only one planet, choose, the, choose that particular planet whatsoever. And if no planet, then the most powerful of the Lord out of the first, second, third and fourth house, you should choose. And depending on that planet being a benefic or malefic, you should choose either a tile flooring or a stone flooring. In this case also, I will say that Sun and Venus goes for wooden flooring. Saturn, Mars, Rahu goes for a stone flooring. And all other planets goes for a tile flooring. The dimension of the tile should also be according to the degrees of the planet. Which if people are interested in, I will reveal maybe in the next video. I'm not dealing with it right now. And that is the first thing. Now, to make the process more simple and more adapt to today's condition, because today you cannot make a home out of wood, or today you cannot make a home out of a particular brick, if I recommend you that. Right. So, of course, suitable and appropriate changes as per the times for which astrology is being practiced should be done. This is a common accepted thumb rule specifically in Muhurta and things related to Muhurta. So, be it matchmaking, Muhurta or Vastu. Appropriate changes according to the times and according to the mind of the astrologer, you are free to do. This is what the Shastra tells you to do. Now, there is some hint in there. The house belongs to which planet? If you have a particular planet strong in your horoscope or particular planet positive in your horoscope, you want that positivity to come to your life. At least I will want that. That the positivity of the positive and powerful planet comes to my house and makes my house more auspicious and better for me. Right? This is what we want. In this particular scenario, understand, and I'm not talking from, you know, I, I'm talking from my ears. I'm not talking anything. I'm talking from my experience. I am talking from what I have recommended my students and clients to do. What I have taught in my courses and my students have also practiced it to work very brilliantly and have given me ample feedbacks. I'm talking based on that. Taking clue from a very ancient classic, which is now not available in print. Nowhere available. Nowhere available. The sun indicates a wooden home. So will you make a home of wood? Certainly nowadays you cannot make a home of wood. But you should take it as said. Uh, sun indicates a home with maximum uses of wood. So instead of having the front door made out of steel or iron, you should prefer a wooden main gate. Instead of having chairs out of made out of steel or anything, you should prefer a wooden chair. And everything that you can do, you should prefer wooden 
including wooden floorings, if that is possible, or at least looking like wood will work fine. There are, I think there are tiles also which now resonate like wood. That can, right? Because sun indicate wooden things. Oh, indicates earth, soil. What do you say? Earth and soil is what moon indicates. Generally, moon and Venus indicates a luxurious palatial building. However, for moon, I should tell you something. For a moon-based home, there should be a ripe area, an open area in the home. Some earth is needed. So a garden in home is good. Or at least you can have some area left without any flooring as such, with soil and sand there. This is a moon-based home. You know, the wiping of the floor with cow dung and other things that were used in ancient India, still now used in villages, is done for moon. And generally in such places where the wiping is done with cow dung and other materials which, and materials which come out of sand, you know, that home is still, you know, in those homes you will see good Influence of moon, right? So people of that home don't fight. They generally have a good, happy marital life. This is the particular reason I think that if you travel through Uttar Pradesh, you will find that in the villages of Uttar Pradesh, outside it, when someone gets married, after marriage, the couple, the husband and wife go outside the village and make a small home out of mud. That home is a representation of their house, of their marital life. And at the time of any festival, festival, they will go to that home and light a lamp there. Even the practice in Bihar is around the time of Deepavali. People make a small home out of mud in front of their houses and light a lamp inside. Things made up of soil, things made up of clay, should be kept inside home if some open area cannot be left out. At least a small home made out of clay should be, should be established at the worshipping place. The image of the deity should be kept under it and it should be worshipped. Specifically for moon, the home should have the home should be beautiful. Now, everyone wants to make a beautiful home, certainly. But a prominent moon house is a house that have a lot of open and airy area. So a moon house is a house which have big rooms. So you say even in a small home of some hundred square feet. So there are three types of, you know, there are, there are two types of homes. 100 square feet small home on one floor, you make three rooms, a small, small three rooms. That is not a moon house. A moon house will be 100 square feet and the ground floor only have one room, very airy and big and a hall. That's all. That type of, that type of house, airy and big, is a moon house. Coming to Mars. Mars indicate a home made up of bricks. So maybe you have seen those buildings where the brick is not plastered, where the brick is raw and seen from outside. There are special bricks used to give this kind of look. This look, the brick look. Or only using the bricks, not doing plaster over it is indicated by Mars. This is a Mars house. So if you have a good and prominent Mars whose beneficence you want to have, you make sure at least that the outer area of the home either have bricks left open, only plastered brick, only plastered brick without any paint, etc. over it, or at least you have the brick look. You know, there are special small size bricks which are used to create that particular look or create a wall of that kind. 
This is what Mars indicates. Mercury indicate industrial design. This is, I think, this is very much in hype nowadays. You know, once I used to visit this Rosiat in uh, Rishigesh, and the architecture was, you know, architecture was something very new to me. So I became amazed at this particular architecture. And then Abhilasha tells me that this is industrial architecture. You know, so this industrial architecture, you know, it, it, it is, it have many things open, you know, a prominent use of pipes and mortars and all these things without covering it. Is what an industrial architecture look like? You know, so on the roof that you will say there are pipes and there is a fan clinging to that pipe without any false ceiling or without any trying to cover those pipes and those things which are used in making the homes, you know, the pipes and garters and multiple things, these all being open. So industrial design of making homes is what is indicated by Mercury. Jupiter, once again, going on the same line, indicates a home which is big, palatial and airy. But along with this, a Jupiter house is a house which is, you know, some royal kind, royal kind of house. You know? So this royal architecture of, you know, having moldings over the wall, having a lot of false ceilings and having a lot of designs inscribed in the wall, this wallpaper. And, you know, people make different designs using POP above their windows, you know, in the mehel type of, you know, the palace type of a design is indicated by Jupiter. Jupiter basically indicates using a lot of plaster of Paris and other substances to do special type of moldings, to make special type of moldings to decorate the house. This is what Jupiter does. And Jupiter house is a house which have a lot of artifacts, a lot of images over the walls. You know, so, you know, in these olden homes, you must have seen that there's a sword on the, there's a sword on the wall, there is a face of a hunted deer on the wall. This is what all Jupiter indicates. Coming to Venus, Venus once again indicates a palatial, spacious, spacious and airy infrastructure. But along with that, Venus indicates a modern architecture. You know, so using this soft clothes fittings and using all this, you know, newly designed things, this, you know, video, doorbell, high level of fittings, these are indicated by Venus. And most importantly, transformable objects are also indicated by Venus. You know, so sofa come bed, recliners, and artistic things, you know, a dining table having a, a dining table having a stone over it, a dining table made up of glass, these things is what Venus indicates. And when you are going to make a Venus house, you make sure that you have all this, you know. So you have a Venetian of bathroom, you have a mirrored, you know, you have you have a mirrored portion in bathroom segregating it from the bath area to the uh, wash basin. Such things, the use of modern equipments in the home, you know, lights which are inscribed into false ceiling is the Venus home. And coming to the Saturn home, Saturn home is made out of stones. Uses of huge stones is indicative of a Saturn home. Right. So, you know, uses of bricks, not bricks, sorry, stones, uses of stones, the stone look, a stone home with prominent uses of stone is what is indicated by Saturn. Along with this, the uses of iron iron chairs and things made up of iron wherever it can be done is also an indication of Saturn infrastructure. Regarding Rahu and Ketu infrastructure, as I have always been telling in all of my course and in all of my videos, that the result of the Rahu Ketu should be decided according to the planet conjoined with them. If no conjunction, then planet aspecting them. And if no aspect also, then according to the Rashi load of Rahu and Ketu. If there is more than one planet that is conjoining or more than one planet that is aspecting Rahu and Ketu, then the result should be taken according to the stronger. Not only this, the place of worship in a home is indicated by sun. Bathroom, 
and places for clean water, which is used for cleaning, bathing, drinking water, water storage, and all these things. You know, clean water, water used for good things is indicated by moon. Water used for bad things such as sewage, etc., is indicated by Rahu. Mars indicates the place where you keep your tools, laptops, etc., or you keep weapons or any tool that is useful in your profession that is indicated by Mars. Mercury indicates the open area, common area, sitting area where people talk and chat. Jupiter indicates the place where you keep your money, when you keep, where you keep your valuables. Venus indicates the bedroom. Saturn indicate where you throw your garbage, solid garbage, and those are those things which are rarely used, use, you know, once a month kind of a things. Storage is indicated by Saturn, and Ketu indicate the stairs. According to the Rashi, these planets are situated in the structure and the placement of these things should according to the Rashis they are into. And if these planets are not into a good Rashi, then the placement etc of these things should be according to the rashi where you want it to be for an example ketu indicates stairs and if you have ketu in the first house that is an odd house there should be odd number of stairs in your home if you have stairs in your home if you have ketu into an even sign even even house sorry not sign even house second house fourth house sixth house eighth house tenth house twelfth house then even number of stairs Odd houses, first house, third house, fifth house, seventh house, ninth, uh, ninth, uh, yeah, ninth house, eleventh house, then odd number of stairs should be there, right? If you have, uh, like, and when you have planets in any house, for, for an example, when you have Saturn in the fourth house, you see Libra. Libra indicate black color. So whenever, where, Whatever place you choose to keep those things that you will use once, once in long, you say once in, once in a month. Or the place where you keep the things which you are going to dispose, garbage. Those things, those places should be blacked out. There should not be much light at those places, first of all. And other attributes of Libra, like if the Libra is falling into the fifth house, then northwest area. northwest area it can be kept provided the fact that saturn is good into this rashi and house and if saturn is not good then you should choose the place where it will be good and the changes should be made accordingly this i have told you in nutshell a few tips regarding original vastu and the astro vastu and all of the things that I have talked about, except for one, two things, for which I have given apt references at apt places. Maximum of these things that I have told you comes from my own research. Because it is my own research, it cannot be found at anywhere, at any other place whatsoever. Copy-paste astrology, learning from someone else and teaching to students is what I don't believe. So to learn the, as I have told you, to learn the authentic Vastu, authentic astro Vastu, with a lot of my researches to get your hands on the knowledge which have been working, which I have seen working in more than a decade. I have taught to my students and they have also found it working in horoscopes. If you want to learn that, the Vastu course that I'm doing from October is a highly recommended must to do course, one of its kind, which teaches you original Vastu and original astro Vastu without any pelagrism and any mix and match such as Feng Shui, et cetera, that I don't believe in. And any and any of this, you know, modern shortcut, yellow color should be on this wall, this should be there, that should be there, free of them. Authentic pure Vastu, which is used to change the fortune, which I have used in 12 years of my experience to change the fortune of people will be taught in the course. And don't think that it will be hard only. I will also give you tips and tricks so that even those students, so that everyone from the day one of the course can start using the knowledge for their betterment. I will also give you tips and tricks. I will also teach you simple things which 
helps you making appropriate vastu changes in a home without doing any to any breaking or any changes to the home also like any structural changes to the home also then i will also be teaching there is no doubt into it but whatever will be taught will be authentic and pure research which cannot be found out at any other place the course is highly recommended and i wish to see all the cgs learners enrolled in the course thank you for watching the video and do tell me in the comments if you like vastu related videos then i will do more of it thank you